Okay, welcome to CS4510 uh, 8-2 and the topic of today is reductions. So the idea is quite simple even if the mechanics can be a little tricky you use one problem to solve another. So first let me define what, it, what we call a mapping reduction. So uh, for A, uh, B, these are languages in uh, Sigma star uh, let uh, f uh, be some computable function, an algorithm basically, uh, we say uh, a is many one or Sipser calls this mapping uh, reducible to B if uh, for all W in A if and only if uh, F of W is in B. Another way to think of this is that the image of uh, the set is exactly B. Right? So Sipser has this book, this picture, he's got like, those are, this is A and this is B and F will map exactly uh, something in A to something in B and something not in A to uh, something not in B. Right. So we can write this then as uh, A less than or equal subscript M B. So why do we care about this? Well, there's actually some uh, very useful properties about this. So if uh, A is reducible to B uh, and uh, B is decidable, then that must imply that A is decidable. So what's our proof? Let, uh, let's call it MB uh, decide B. So we assume B is decidable. There exists a decider. Call it MB for machine for B. Uh, let F reduce. Uh, we can say from A to B. Uh, define M A as follows. On input W, compute uh, F of W, run M uh, B on F of W, and, ex and accept whatever it accepts and reject whatever it rejects. And output what I'll say it this way make things easier it's gonna say uh, return MB on F of W so whatever MB when you run MB on F of W whatever MB is going to return it will return so for this if uh, W was an A then obviously f of w should be in b. mb accepts uh, f of w if uh, w is an a, right? So a, uh, M, ma is correct then. So ma decides uh, a. So a is a decidable. So that's actually not so much that something we care about. Showing something is decidable is kind of easy. Showing something is undecidable is much more useful. So from this follows the following corollaries. If uh, A from A is reducible to B, uh, A is undecidable. This implies that uh, B 
is undecidable. Uh, if A is reducible to B, oops, uh, B is Turing recognizable, that implies that A must have been Turing recognizable. You can think the proof is similar here, where instead of a decider, we construct a recognizer. Right. And then from that, it follows if uh, A, again, A is reducible to B, A is not uh, Turing recognizable, that implies that B is not uh, Turing recognizable. So if we can show a reduction to an undecidable problem, that should imply that that problem is also undecidable. So consider the following language, ATM, which you can probably guess by now, A is for accept, so we have M, W, such that M accepts W. And uh, we can reduce this to halt as follows. So I'm going to prove this language is undecidable by constructing uh, the following uh, function. So here's our reduction. Basically, if something accepts, it also halts, right? We can sort of abuse that. If it accepts, it has to halt. Given that this language, assuming to the contrary, this language is decidable, and we give this reduction uh, to the halting problem, that would imply that halt is... In, uh, so these together would imply that halt is uh, decidable. But we proved that it's not. So there's our contradiction. Uh, contradiction, right? So then that implies that ATM must be undecidable. So let's walk through the actual reduction now. Uh, on uh, input, so we're going to take an element of ATM. It's going to be of the form of M comma W. So M is a Turing machine. W is some word. Uh, suppose that ATM is decidable. Then we can use the decider for it. So if uh, M comma W is in ATM, so we ask the decider for ATM. I'm not going to give it a name just for... Simplicity. If it's in ATM, that means M accepts W. But that means accepting state is only reached if we halt. So this halts. Accept. There are more cases, though. Else. What if it rejects? Uh, I'm going to write this this way. So else. Uh... Define M prime to be M with the accept state and the reject state uh, reversed. So you just sort of swap the labelings. So whenever this machine rejects, it actually accepts, right? Whenever M prime rejects, that means M accepted. And if M rejects, then uh, M prime should accept. So we can determine if M prime accepts, that means M rejects, right? So now if uh, M prime comma W, we pass this through the decider for ATM, is in ATM, uh, that means that M, pri M prime was an ATM, that means M prime accepts W, which means that M rejected W. So this M rejected W means M halted. So we can accept here. Else, here we can just simply reject. We can reject here because we know that M neither accepts nor rejects. So, what else could it do? If some Turing machine doesn't accept or it doesn't reject, it has to loop forever, right? So, let's argue correctness. If uh, M, comma W is in ATM, that implies that... Uh, f of m comma w, which is going to be what? It's going to just say accept or reject if it halts or not. 
it's going to be correct here. Right. So And an element of this is going to map into halt only if uh, we could decide ATM, right? Only if it was an ATM correctly, right? If if it's an ATM, except if it's an ATM, except. So, so together, this whole thing implies that halt is decidable. Well, I have it here. Halt is decidable, but we know that this is not true. Therefore, ATM must be undecidable. So... We have done our first reduction. We have reduced the problem of determining if a machine halts from the determining if a machine can accept. And we know we cannot determine. Now we know that uh, because halt is undecidable, then so is ATM. We cannot determine if a machine accepts or rejects. So we went uh, from ATM to halting, but we can actually go from halting uh, to ATM. How? Uh, suppose that halt is decidable. Then there is some decider for it. So uh, I'll just I'll just give the direction, uh, give the reduction on input. Uh, M comma W. If uh, M comma W is in halt, then we know it halts, right? Then we know M halts on W. So we can simulate it then. We can run and not be afraid of getting stuck in an infinite loop. Uh, simulate uh, M on W until it halts. Uh, and it has to halt because it's in M because it's in uh, halt. Return We'll say accept if M W accepts. Reject if M on W rejects. And if M comma W, for example, it was not in halt, then we know it has to loop forever. So it cannot accept. So we can immediately just say reject. So if we somehow knew that uh, ATM was decide was not was undecidable, and we didn't know halt was uh, undecidable, we could perform a reduction here to show that halt must be undecidable. So together, this whole thing. So this goes the other way. ATM undecidable implies that a uh, halt is undecidable. This is the way the book does it actually. It introduces ATM and it calls it the halting problem and then it introduces the halting problem and calls that the real halting problem and it goes back to saying we're not calling ATM the halting problem by the way. That was a that was a, a secret. I don't like that. But this is the reduction that they give for uh, reducing the problem from halt to ATM. Okay, let's do some more. Let ETM be exactly what you think it's going to be. It's going to be the set of Turing machine encodings such that the language of the uh, machine is going to be the empty set. So this machine should reject all input. What we're going to do is actually reduce to ATM. This problem is undecidable. We're going to assume that there is a decider uh, for ETM and use that to show we can construct a decider for ATM in a sort of creative way. So what I'm going to first do, we're, what we're going to do is we're not going to simulate the machine M. We're going to sort of cheat the machine in a certain way. So let me just give you the uh, the reduction on input. And I'll put some more space this time. M comma W. So uh, construct uh, M prime. Construct M prime from from uh, M and X and excuse me, M and W. And we're going to define that on the side over here. So we're going to say M prime on input X. Uh, if 
x does not equal w, reject. Uh, if x does equal w, we're going to run m on w, or I guess in this case, it will just say x, and uh, accept except if m of x accepts. So this is our uh, construction of m prime. So I'm going to say we're going to we need m and we need a w to const to construct m prime. Basically, what we're doing is we're cheating it. We're saying okay, for all inputs. So what m prime is going to do, it's going to reject all possible inputs except this one input, which is going to accept. And if it accepts it, then it just simulates m. So this should reject everything, uh, but it allows us to determine if w uh, was in uh, uh, the language of m or not, right? So if m prime rejects everything, then we know that uh this condition is never reached so we can determine something about the acceptance of m and w so if uh m prime w is in uh etm so what we say is if this accepts then we reject and then else that means this uh so that means uh this is rejected then we accept This machine, at most, is either uh, M prime, either is the empty set, or it's the string containing W, right? So, and it's depending on which one it is, is dependent upon if M accepts W or not. So, using a decider for ETM, we can cheat our way to a decider for ATM, and that's the sort of beauty of reductions. You can do all kinds of complicated things here to come up with a good enough construction to decide one problem in terms of another. Now that we know that ETM is undecidable, you might be jumping at the opportunity to show that EQTM is undecidable. The idea is quite simple. It's just ETM, but you could think of ETM as EQTM with not, with, without a free variable. So this is Turing machines M1, M2, such that the language of M1 equals the language of m2 right so these are pairs of Turing machines were equivalent so this is basically asking can we test if two machines have the same language we can't run them both for infinite on infinitely many infants obviously so is there some computable way that we could do this turns out it's undecidable and what we're going to do is use the fact that eqtm is undecidable is what we're going to do is reduce to etm so we're going to construct a decider for ETM, which we know is undecidable because we were able to reduce to ATM. So uh, let M empty set, that's what I'm calling it, be the TM to reject all inputs. Then what do we have? We have... Um, Basically, we're just going to check equality to, the, to this. So on input, what else? Uh, M. So recall, we're constructing a decider for ETM. So we just need we just need the machine. So on input M. If uh, M M empty set is in uh, EQTM. That means M uh, accepts the empty set, right? So we can, that means that it should be an ETM. So that means we accept. Else, we reject. So ET, EQTM is undecidable. Now I'm going to give you one last uh, reduction today, and this is probably the hardest one. So let regular use all caps actually because it's language regular tm be 
the set of Turing machines which decide exactly the regular languages. So uh, M is a Turing machine and the language of M is uh, decidable by DFA. So basically it's regular. Right? So this is, this is quite a tricky construction. The idea is we're going to reduce to ATM. So we're going to try and uh, get a machine which can decide a regular language if and only if uh, M can accept W. And we're going to use it to decide uh, ATM. So I'm just going to say we're going to reduce this, by the way, to ATM. We're going to show it decided for ATM. So on input, what else? M comma W. Uh, construct M prime from M and W. And I'm going to write what M prime is over here. M prime is going to be on input, uh, let's say X. If uh, X equals uh, 0 to the N, 1 to the N uh, for some N, Uh, then we accept. I'm basically choosing a non-regular language here, if you, if you notice. Else, uh, run m on x and uh, accept if it accepts. If uh, M prime is in reg, uh, I'll just write reg TM, then we know that we hit this branch here, right? So we were able to determine if it accepts or not, uh, then we accept. Else, we reject. So two comments I can make at this point. One is when I give you a language and I say prove it's undecidable, your first sort of knee-jerk reaction should be thinking about reductions and you should be thinking about knee-jerk reactions to ATM. But sometimes they're easier languages to reduce to. So you want to, of course, minimize the amount of work. You want to minimize the complexity of a proof you're going to do. So, for example, this was a very good example because I'm thinking of ETM is kind of like uh, EQTM. So I'm, those got to be re related somehow. Similarly, ATM and HALT are related right? It's cute that the reduction goes both ways for that one. So if I give you a language, you should be thinking, wow, how can I reduce one way? How can I reduce the other way? Second of all, this has uh, been... Second of all, you may have noticed that these are properties of Turing machines. Uh, so turns out most properties of the languages of Turing machines are undecidable. So you can test if a Turing machine... For example, has 17 states. You just count the states and see if it's 17 of them. But you cannot determine if the language of a Turing machine is decidable by some Turing machine that also has 17 states or something, right? So most property, most properties of the languages decided by Turing machines are undecidable. This is called the Rice's theorem, and I'm going to devote an entire lecture to it. So, but for now, let's skip it.